one still protesting in Uvalde, and now they have a new concern after reports of a controversial hire with the school's police department. Why parents say they are angry. Gas prices could go up once more, but the U.S. is hoping it'll fight the surge. Two ways government officials may try to combat high prices. And we're starting to see more clouds roll in. We'll see more clouds by this afternoon. Plus, we have a new tropical depression in the Caribbean. All the latest coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. A protest with new purpose by parents in Uvalde. It may have fallen on deaf ears, though. That group was hoping to get some answers from the Uvalde CISD about a controversial new hire within the school police department. As Katrina Weber shows us, it's been neither confirmed nor denied. All they've heard so far is silence. Before the sun was up, Nikki Cross was delivering backpacks to the Uvalde school district that carried one heavy load. I brought these up here just as a reminder to them. They, have, they walk by this door. This is where they've been going in every morning as to why we're here. Cross's son, Usaya Garcia, was among the 19 children gunned down inside Robb Elementary back in May, along with two teachers. She filled the book bags with symbols of each victim, while also planning to make a statement herself. Soon, she was joined by more than two dozen others, some carrying signs, intent on blocking entrances to the school administration building. They're upset over news that the school police department has hired Crimson Elizondo, a former DPS trooper seen in this body cam video at the school the day of the massacre. She and others are under investigation for their alleged inaction. She was one of the first ones on scene and she did nothing because it was not her child in there. Their protest drew support from the community, but no attention from their intended targets. School administrators never showed up for work. I'm pretty sure they knew that we were all coming, but regardless, we're going to be here and we won't give up. I think angry is like an understatement. Laura Garza, whose niece, Amory Jo, died in the shooting, says the families are hurting and deserve answers. The person in charge of these kids like can't even have the decency to get with them or meet with them or reach out to them. For many of the people here, the no-show by school administrators was really no surprise, but they say it won't deter them at all. They plan to stay here as long as it takes. We'll be out here until something happens. They can't, they can't stay closed forever. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now we emailed the Uvalde Consolidated ISD for comment last night and again this morning. So far, no one has responded. Meanwhile, State Senator Roland Gutierrez is offering his own response about the controversial new hire. In a statement, he says in part, quote, DPS Director Steve McGraw said he would be the first to resign if there is any culpability in the Department of Public Safety, period. It's time for Governor Abbott to call for McGraw's resignation. He goes on to say whoever allow this officer to be put on the payroll and stationed in our schools just slap this community in the face, end quote. And a reminder, KSAT is hosting a community town hall today at 2 o'clock for domestic violence. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and we'll be, taking, we'll be talking about the connection between domestic violence and mass shootings. The town hall will be moderated by our own anchor and reporter, Courtney Freeman, and hosted by a collaborative commission of domestic violence. The town hall will be streamed on KSAT+. Plus. A former Precinct 2 captain indicted for public corruption is due in court this afternoon again, but his testimony in the sentencing for Michelle Barrientes Vela may not happen. Mark de Garcia reached a deal with prosecutors on Tuesday night to testify against his former boss, but that agreement is now in jeopardy. The ex-constable and ex-captain were represented by the same attorney in civil lawsuits, creating a potential conflict of interest. Barrientes Vela was convicted last month on two felony counts of tampering with records, but she's hoping to bypass prison time altogether. Prosecutors say she faces up to 10 years in prison. This noon, police are still searching for a man's killer. Officers tell us that they found the victim in the middle of the road near East Houston and North, Polar North Polaris Street. That's on the east side. However, it's not clear if this is where someone shot that man. He was pronounced dead at the scene. So far, police have not arrested anyone in connection with the case. TxDOT is set to check out a bridge after an early morning crash on the east side. Police say that the wreck happened just before four this morning. 
The driver's vehicle ended up under a bridge and then it caught fire near I-10 and East Houston Street. The person who was in that vehicle is now in the hospital. There were some early reports that there were structural issues within that bridge. Police say it appears to be okay, but TxDOT crews will be out there to make sure. Cleanup underway after a fire on the southwest side of town. It happened on West Mayfield Drive near Bynum Avenue and Southwest Military Drive. That's where crews say flames broke out next to a freight container. It was converted into an apartment. While two people are displaced, no one was hurt. No word yet on what sparked that fire. The world now bracing for another blow to the global economy after OPEC plus cartel announced it is cutting oil production by 2 million barrels a day, and that could affect our gas prices. ABC's M. Wynn reports the U.S. is now looking at ways to avoid any more pain at the pump. New concerns that gas prices could soon spike again nationwide after OPEC Plus announced it's slashing oil production by 2 million barrels a day to drive up oil prices. The group of oil producing nations led by Russia and Saudi Arabia planning the move for November just in time for America's midterm elections. It will affect in the end all of us by somewhere in the ballpark of 10 to 30 cents a gallon. It's bad timing for Democrats in Congress and the White House, where officials say it's a clear sign OPEC is siding with Russia amid the war in Ukraine, harming the interests of the U.S. and European nations dependent on Russian oil. President Biden now considering releasing at least 10 million barrels from the nation's strategic oil reserves next month, though it's unclear how much that might help. Disappointment, and uh, we're looking at what alternatives you may have. Gas prices have already been creeping up, the national average at 3.87, a four cent increase overnight. In California, the average is at 6.42, one gas station topping eight bucks a gallon. It's crazy. The reason? Maintenance at refineries causing a supply supply shortage, as well as an increase in demand for fuel. OPEC's cuts in production also expected to drive up heating and holiday travel costs. And it just feels like you're just caught under a wave that's bigger than you have any control over. Meanwhile, amid a Wall Street Journal report claiming the U.S. is preparing to scale down sanctions against Venezuela's authoritarian government in order to boost oil production, a National Security Council spokesperson telling ABC News there are no plans to change our sanctions policy without constructive steps from the Maduro regime. In a controversial trip to Saudi Arabia last year, President Biden lobbied the Saudis to boost oil production, though he claimed today that wasn't the point of the visit. OPEC's latest move shows how little influence the administration has over the Saudi regime. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. One of the Oakland A's, Stephen Voigt, played his last game last night. He's decided to retire, and thanks to his kids in the long ball, he went out in style. We'll explain coming up in sports. If you have gone on a Target run recently, you might have come across the new line of clothing and accessories celebrating Hispanic heritage. It's actually small Latina-owned business from right here in South Texas. Jin and Vero run the brand JZD out of Brownsville. They are known for their designs featuring popular Spanish or Spanglish phrases, and they garnered the attention of celebrities and now one of the biggest retailers around. All of these pieces are so personal to us. And when we were working on this collection, we really wanted to create pieces that when somebody that had no idea, had never heard of JZD would see it walking, they would be like, wow, that reminds me of my parents or my grandparents and those experiences and feelings that we had when we were growing up as Latinos. And so we're just incredibly excited to have the opportunity to showcase that. You can watch the full interview with the two ladies, Alicia and RJ did on KSAT News now on the KSAT YouTube channel, KSAT.com, or listen wherever you get your podcast. They talked more about their journey with Target and how they brought a mariachi band to their local store. A contemporary arts center in downtown, now featuring works by national and international artists. Tiffany Wirtz takes us to Ruby City, where a local artist shares his artwork that was stored for so many years. Stand in front of it. The Alamo is gone. If you move to the side, it appears again. Local artists Jim Mendiola and Ruben Ortiz Torres are behind Tejano Dream. It's a lenticular 
photograph, the kind that you kind of move and it changes. They made this art piece about 20 years ago, and now it's being shown at Ruby City in downtown. I'm very, very excited that it's being shown in San Antonio again. The exhibit is titled Tangible Nothing. This exhibition brings together over 50 works from our collection by artists from all around the world that are exploring ideas around materials and how to depict nothingness. The Contemporary Art Center houses the collection of Linda Pace, who was a collector and a philanthropist in San Antonio. There are different visual reminders of Linda Pace throughout this exhibit, from her purse to her eyes to her portrait. She was a lifelong supporter of artists. She devoted her life to the arts, to contemporary art in particular, to helping artists create and realize their dreams. For Jim, he believes this art center will have a big impact on the community. I think a place like this, kids will come and see stuff and it, it elicits discussion and they start talking about it. The free exhibit runs through July of next year. Tiffany Huertas, KSET 12 News. Outside with life, you got a jacket on today. Are you, is, it, is it cold in here? <laughs> I have a jacket on because earlier this morning I was cooking with David Elder and was sweating. So the jacket is here as camouflage. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Got a little too much information? Full honesty, I like it. Oh. No, uh, it, 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 it is getting a little warm outside, especially if you're out cooking. Temperatures have made their way up into the 80s. The aquifer, no surprise here. It's down again today, two tenths of a foot, 630.2. In your pollen count, ragweed jumps back up today. It's in the moderate category. Ragweed has been a problem really for the last several weeks. So if you're sniffling and sneezing, that could be why. Molds are low at 310. We do have a new tropical depression in the Caribbean. We're going to show you that coming up. At the top of our show, we had a story about the protest going on by parents at the Uvalde School District over the hiring of a former DPS pol uh, police officer uh, who was on scene during the Uvalde shooting uh, at, at Robb Elementary back on May 24th. We have just received a news release from the Uvalde Consolidated Independent School District saying that they are deeply distressed by the information that was disclosed yesterday evening concerning one of our recently hired employees. Her name is Crimson Elizondo. We sincerely apologize to the victim's families and to the greater Uvalde community for the pain that the revelation has caused. And it goes on to say that they have let her go. She is no longer employed by the Uvalde Consolidated Independent School District as a police officer. That's once again coming from a news release just let out by the Uvalde CISD in that statement. So we'll, of course, have more for you on our website, KSAT.com, and more for you later on this half hour and on KSAT 12 News at 5 and 6. Meantime, we're going to go to weather and uh, have a chat with you about the possibility that there may be something in the tropics that could affect us. Yeah, well, we're going to see a tropical depression down there. The question is, will we see a little bit of moisture from that? It's possible, and I'll show you that here in just a second. And boy, do we need the rain. I mean, today's Thursday, so we're going to show you the drought monitor. and just keeps getting worse and worse every week, right? Let's start with last week because I think these comparisons are important. Not a lot changes here, but we're starting to see our exceptional drought get just a little bit worse as uh, we look at today's drought monitor. And what I also want to point out is the exceptional drought now covers parts of San Antonio, Converse, New Braunfels, Seguin, San Marcos, Canyon Lake, up to Blanco. See, these, these are all areas that are seeing a serious lack of rainfall. But it, even around San Antonio, we're in extreme drought here. So this whole area has been hit pretty hard. Uh, the hill country doing a little bit better because we've seen some rain there, but even then, severe drought in place for much of the hill country. As we look at Medina Lake, it is at 7.4% full, down 77 feet. This is uh, it's still going down, but not as quickly as it has been. So that's good news, I suppose. It's down 33 feet since one year ago and still falling. As we look at the water vapor, there is an upper level low off to our west. It is bringing some upper level moisture into Texas. We've seen some high clouds streaming in. There is also a few rain showers as you get up into the Texas panhandle. But for us, 
no rain. It's just these high clouds that likely arrive a little bit later today, probably not until this evening. So in the meantime, we'll see lots of sun in another warm day. Here's KSAT 12 hour forecast 88 degrees by 3 o'clock. We're closing in on 90 by 5 p.m. 86 to 6 o'clock and there we start to see the increase in clouds. These clouds will thicken up as we get into tomorrow. So tomorrow's going to be a partly cloudy to mostly cloudy day. We'll still see some sun. It'll be filtered sun though. 73 degrees by midnight. And as we go outside for you right now, we've got mostly clear skies, a little hazy out there. 82 at the airport. Southerly winds at about five miles per hour and dew point is at 56. 77 in Rock Springs. That's one of the cool spots. 84 New Braunfels, 85 Gonzales, 87 in Catua. And just about everyone is in the 80s at this point. And I do think we'll see a few 90s on the map this afternoon. 84 in Boulevard, 84 at Randolph, 85 right now at Stinson. And dew points came up just a little bit this morning. Not to the point where you probably felt it, but we're starting to see the dew points ease a little bit closer to 60. And that means we could start to see some muggy conditions and spots. But all in all, it's still relatively dry. Okay, let's talk about what's going on in the Caribbean. This is Tropical Depression number 13. Newly formed here right along the coast of South America. But as this moves out over the Caribbean, likely to strengthen and it could become a category one hurricane if it receives a name and it looks like it will. It'll be Julia and this uh, is forecast to hit around Nicaragua as we get into Sunday with 80 mile per hour winds and likely some pretty heavy rain. Now that heavy rain spreads across Central America and then as we get into next week, the question will become does some of this moisture make it up into Texas? So the, these deep orange colors represent good tropical moisture. And if the high, which some of the models are showing, sets up just to our south and east, it could help to bring in some of this moisture as we get into Wednesday and Thursday, which could give us a small chance for rain. It's nothing to get too excited about yet, but it is, it is at least a little bit of a change in the forecast. And we have added in a very small chance coming up on Wednesday. Increasing clouds today. A very, very small chance for a sprinkler or two tomorrow, 89 Saturday, 88 Sunday. It'll be a partly cloudy and nice weekend. Hot to start next week, but we will be watching that added humidity and maybe that outside chance for a shower or two on Wednesday. Guys. Thanks, Justin. Spurs back at it tonight. <laughs> See if those young kids can improve a little bit on the court. Yeah, the I'm sure game. their heads were swimming a little bit against yes, Houston, the Rockets. Yeah, I mean, they lost by, what, 30-plus points. So <laughs> tonight, the Spurs will host Orlando Magic. And Josh Richardson, one of the veterans on the team, feels the younger guys are going to do much better tonight. Plus, in college football, UTSA quarterback Frank Harris is one of the best in the FBS. Coming up. Steven votes three kids made their way to the broadcast booth to introduce their dad in his final big league game with the Oakland A's before his retirement in big board sports. It is game day for the Spurs who are home tonight. The host at Orlando Magic as they continue preseason play. Now the regular season is less than two weeks away in their preseason opener Sunday at Houston. The Spurs are roughed up by the Rockets 134 to 96. Not the way the Spurs wanted to open up preseason, but after some hard practices this week, they'll give it another go tonight. First game, um, don't, we can't really overreact to that. Um, we came in and got a tough practice yesterday but I mean the mood was good because we had competitors so we were going at each other for a long time but I mean it's, it's what you asked for so hopefully we can uh, just keep getting better and building up. Spurs will host the Magic tonight at 7 at the AT&T Center. The UTSA Roadrunners have a dominating offense once again. Following their 45-30 victory on the road against Middle Tennessee, the Roadrunners are tied for the lead in the FBS when it comes to passing offense that averages 365.8 yards per game. QB1 Frank Harris through five games this season is thrown for 1,724 yards and 12 touchdowns while completing almost 70% of his passes with a quarterback rating of 162.7. Now they face Western Kentucky, the team they had to beat to win their first conference USA crown. I think the line is doing a great job of just giving me time back there. You know, the receivers just, you know, they're freaks. They go out there and make plays. Um, but I definitely want to shout out to them for getting a run game going. Uh, Brady and Trey, they did a great job of hitting the holes and just accelerating. So I definitely give a shout out to the O line for that. Kickoff in the Alamo Dome this Saturday is set for 5 p.m. How 
about that. Oakland A's catcher Stephen Vogt homer in his final career at bat, sending a shot to right field to help the A's beat the Angels 3-2 on the final day of the regular season. Vogt ended his career the way he started it with a home run. He became just the 10th player in the expansion era since 1961 to have a home run for his first and last career hit, with the last one coming at least 10 years after the first. His kids introduced one of his at-bats, and then he goes yard in his final <laughs> big league plate appearance. How awesome for him. I wonder how much that ball's worth. <laughs> And you know what? He's a great underdog story because yeah. he didn't even start in the bigs till he was 28. Yeah, wow. that's awesome. So that's pretty His cool. His kids sounded kind of young. Right? Yeah, late, late starter. Very pumped up for dad. So yeah. now all the guys are going to have their kids do the announcing of their names so they can hit a home run. I think that's a cool way to go out. New trend. It worked. <laughs> There's it a new study out, and it is making the case for animal therapy. How it says that dogs can boost your brain activity. More help is on the way for Southwest Florida. President Biden promising an extended period of federal assistance in the wake of Hurricane Ian. I'm Rena Roy, and I'll have the latest from Fort Myers coming up. And new today at five in just days, hearing aids will be made more affordable and accessible. But there are questions to consider before buying over the counter. Our Marilyn Morris explains what to look out for when the new option hits the market. That's today at five after Entertainment Tonight. It happened again overnight for the second time this week. North Korea launching ballistic missiles, two short range missiles fired into the sea east of the Korean Peninsula. It was Monday when the North Koreans rattled Japanese citizens by sending a medium range missile right over Japan for the first time in five years. That missile traveling farther than any like it before. In response, the U.S. and South Koreans have conducted live fire drills as a show of force. The South Koreans launched yesterday, ending uh, with a missile that was ended up hitting a nearby military base. And then it erupted into flames. There were no injuries reported. Now to the ongoing rescue and cleanup efforts going on in southwestern Florida in the wake of Hurricane Ian. And community members are offering what they can to help. ABC's Rena Roy shows us how fire stations and churches are stepping in to provide basic necessities. Amid destruction and devastation, a moment of bipartisanship, President Biden and Governor Ron DeSantis joining forces to help the people of Florida move forward after Hurricane Ian. We are cutting through the red tape, uh, and that's from local government, state government, all the way up uh, to the president. So we appreciate uh, the, the team effort. The president and first lady visiting hard hit Fort Myers Wednesday, getting a firsthand look at the widespread damage. We have one job and only one job, and that's to make sure the people of Florida get everything that they need to fully, thoroughly recover. Thousands still without basic essentials like food and water. This fire station in Fort Myers offering free showers. We have no water, but we're here to take a shower. We've been yeah. going to the amenity center to get water out of the pool so we can flush our toilets. Churches and nonprofits also doing their part. The last two days we've served over 40,000 meals because we're here in Southwest Florida, we're still in a food and water crisis. Pastor Matt Keller and his team of volunteers delivering hot meals to local hospitals, shelters and first responders. For us hearing the stories of um, people who haven't eaten in three days, uh, people who are checking into the emergency room at the hospital for starvation because they haven't eaten since the storm hit. I'm Dave Fire Search and rescue teams still working around the clock on Pine Island, which now has a temporary bridge after its causeway was destroyed. This volunteer group of military veterans helping clean up. It's a big relief because I had no idea what I was going to do with the tree. And more help is on the way. President Biden announcing that the federal government will pay for emergency response efforts for two months instead of 30 days at the governor's request. Rena Roy, ABC News, Fort Myers, Florida. And a reminder for you, local animal shelters need your help because this week the Humane Society took in over 100 dogs and cats from Florida after Ian hit that state. The shelter is asking for donations so they can get some supplies to care for those pets. We've got a link on KSET.com. Some of the dogs and cats could be available for adoption as soon as today. And another shelter in another community, San Antonio Pets Alive, took to its social media pages to ask people to consider taking in a new pet. 
In a video, the shelter's executive director says the organization is now caring for 800 animals and it simply has no more space for more dogs and cats. You can learn more about it and about adoptions on the Pets Alive website. And if you're thinking about adopting a dog, here you go. If you needed more reason to love your furry friends, turns out petting a dog is actually good for your brain. In a study, researchers put brain scanners on people and had them pet a stuffed animal and then a live dog. And there was a big boost in brain activity when the person got to pet the pup, especially the frontal cortex, the part of the brain that handles how we think and feel. As soft and cute as a stuffed animal may be, researchers think the real animal creates some emotional involvement and that's what activates the brain. I think it's true on for just about any animal. I think that they, they make your life better. They do. Large and small. Somebody to talk to and somebody that doesn't really care. Yeah. Scientifically proven. Yep. Just feed me. No doubt about it. Well, hey, you, you guys were just showing some of the scenes from Florida. I, I'm just texting with Adam Kasky here, and he was telling me that he was talking to an insurance adjuster there in Florida, and he's saying that this damage is just as bad as Katrina, on par with that, so a lot of cleanup still underway in Florida. And by the way, you can follow Adam Kasky on his Facebook page. We've also got a lot of his content there on KSAT.com. He's, of course, in Florida helping his in-laws clean out their house there in Fort Myers. So if you want to check it out, uh, KSAT.com. Now to some lighthearted fun here. I, I want to show you the skeletons again. We get this in around noontime. Skywatcher is so great with this. Uh, there they are. This is the new setup today. They're playing golf. And that's, uh, that's pretty ingenious right there. Uh, he says this spans over three yards, by the way. They got like some sand traps down the way, you know. Uh, and uh, yeah, that is uh, a job well done. He said he was laughing so hard. Uh, he nearly broke three ribs. See? Uh, See what you did there? Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks, sir. We appreciate it. If you're heading out to some of the football games, there are a few tonight. Uh, well, that looks great. We'll see uh, comfortable conditions, 85 at kickoff, 79 at halftime. Sunset's around 713. And we do need to pass along that today is another one of those days where ozone levels are elevated. Those who are uh, sensitive to that or uh, uh, that are sensitive to that kind of thing. It's an unhealthy situation. We've had those for several days now. We'll be right back. Once again, late breaking news. While parents in Uvalde have been frustrated that their concerns not being heard today, action by the Uvalde Consolidated Independent School District. The district says it has fired Crimson Elizondo. Elizondo is among the troopers under investigation for their actions or inactions on May 24th during the Robb Elementary School shooting. You can see that was her uh, right there on the right side of your screen. CNN reports body camera video from May 24th appears to show her Elizondo outside of the school. At one point, CNN says she could be heard saying, quote, if my son had been in there, I would not have been outside. I promise you that, unquote. Last night, Crimson Elizondo was listed as a member of its seven person police unit on the Uvalde CISD website. Today, the district sent out a press release saying they are distressed by the information disclosed. The district says in part, quote, we sincerely apologize to the victims' families and the greater Uvalde community for the pain that this revelation has caused. The district says Elizondo was fired from her position effective today. We're going to have reaction from the Uvalde community. It's coming up tonight at 5 and 6. Back outside with live cam, dry, cool here, but... You know, you were talking about Adam Kasky being out there. We saw some of his video that he sent to us yesterday, mm -hmm. and he's walking through his in-laws' house, and the carpet's all squishy. And we've had some floods around here, so a lot of people understand what they're going through in, in a sense, but not not the destruction that they they face. It's so. it's just so widespread, and they yeah. got they got the wind, they got the storm surge, and then they got freshwater flooding on top of that. So it's and just. And now they got the mold to deal with. It is going to be a long road to recovery. Uh, but again, if you want to check out Adam Kasky's stuff, we have a lot of it on our website, and you can see the destruction there. Uh, 82 degrees so far today. 62 was the low this morning. The records are 95 and 46. Thank goodness those are not in jeopardy today. We'll see the temperatures just a little bit above average this afternoon. More on that weekend forecast coming up.
That's right. Adam Kasky over in Florida yeah. uh, dealing with well, you could almost smell how yeah, nasty those just, houses are right now with all the mold and mildew that's happening. Meantime here, we're hoping for a little. It's a little rain just somewhere. Just a little bit of rain. We're looking all through the computer models. <laughs> okay, to find the rain. I think there is going to be a small opportunity as we get into next week. So that's the, the kind of positive news here. Maybe a little bit of a pattern shift because things have been so dry, including the low humidity, which until we get some more uh, deeper moisture in here, we're not going to see any real rain chances. And I think there's an opportunity for that coming up. We'll talk about it. First, though, we start off on a lighthearted note uh. here. <laughs> I mean, come on. I, this is my favorite part about KSI Connect. You, you get to see the, the pups dressed up for Halloween. This is Royce and Zoe. <laughs> I love the tie. Looking, looking very debonair, yes, I must say. Uh, yeah, good luck. Uh, <laughs> and you can continue to send in those KSAC Connect pictures. Uh, all of them have been fantastic, and we love seeing the pups especially. Time lapse shows that we had clear skies this morning, and we've continued with mostly clear skies, although we're starting to see a few of those high clouds we were talking about stream in. And we're going to see more and more of this as we head into the latter parts of the afternoon and into this evening. 82 degrees right now, southerly winds at about 5 miles per hour. And here is the picture across Texas. We do have some rain. New Mexico, North Texas seeing some rain. It's just not making its way down here. There's an upper level low out to the west. They're a little closer to that energy and there you go. They get the rain. We don't. Uh, a little closer look at Amarillo. A few showers working through Lubbock. Some showers there. They saw some rain yesterday. As we go south, though, you see that we are getting some of the clouds out of this, and more and more of those high clouds will start to uh, stream through as we head into the afternoon hours. Right now, 83 Kerrville, 84 in Honda. It's turning out to be a pretty warm day. 87 Gonzales, you're likely going to be up above 90 there. 88 in Pleasanton, another place where likely temperatures jump up above 90 this afternoon in the forecast high here in san antonio 89 90 in somerset 90 in castroville 90 in divine and uh, mid 80s up there around kerrville dew point trend we're going to see dew points stay in the upper 40s low 50s i think as we uh, go throughout the next several days but it's as we get into tuesday and wednesday that's what i want to watch uh, as some deeper moisture tries to get in here we could see dew points come up a little bit we need more moisture to get any sort of rain back in the picture. So that is a time frame we'll be watching it. And part of the reason that I'm encouraged is because we could see a little bit of moisture from this thing. This is tropical depression number 13. It is developed in the Caribbean. Right now winds are at 35 miles per hour. But this strengthens into a hurricane before making landfall, we think somewhere around Nicaragua by this weekend. It's gonna bring a lot of heavy rain there and wind obviously. And then it moves inland and brings more heavy rain to places like Honduras and Mexico. But some of that moisture potentially could get pulled up into Texas. If everything sets up right, some of this moisture could surge up the western side of the Gulf of Mexico, and some of that can make it into our area. Look, it's not anything to get too excited about. It's kind of a long shot, but some of the models are hinting at this. And if that happens, that would probably help to get a few showers at least going there along the coast. This is something we'll watch. This would be Wednesday, maybe Thursday of next week. That's the time frame where we have added in a little bit of a rain chance. Increasing clouds today. We'll see a, quite a bit more cloud cover tomorrow. 10% chance of a few sprinkles as those high clouds thicken up over the area, 88 degrees. This weekend, partly cloudy. If you have weekend plans, looks great. Just a little warm during the afternoons. And then next week, mostly sunny Monday and Tuesday. We will see more humidity, though, by Tuesday into Wednesday. And there's that small rain chance on Wednesday. Right now, just a 10% chance. Maybe we can bump that up, hopefully, as we get a little closer. We'll take it. Yep. Thank you, Justin. I was thinking Cooper Rush was going to get a real tough test this week, but it's the Rams. I thought it was Philly for some reason, but it's, I skipped over the Rams. It's the Rams. Yeah. What's good. wrong with the Look, Rams? I, I, they're just not as good as they were last year. I mean, they're still working out some things over there. They lost some players on both sides of the ball. So, yes, coming up, it looks like Cooper Rush will be QB1 against the Rams because Dak is still on the mend. And in baseball, a former New Braunfels baseball great was named Brooks Robinson Minor League Player of the Year. Coming up. ASAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome our lost loved ones back to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each has a specific purpose. 
origins of pan de muerto can be traced back to Mesoamerica, when the Aztecs would place food offerings at tombs. This is believed to nourish the souls on their journey to the living. There are many variations of pan de muerto. Some loaves are made to look like the human body, others are made to look like bones or skulls. They are often flavored with orange blossom and topped with sugar or sesame seeds. You can place pan de muerto on your ofrenda along with the rest of your loved one's favorite foods. The Spurs will host the Magic tonight as they continue preseason play. Trey Jones, who's making his bid to become the Spurs' new starting point guard with the departure of DeJounte Murray, summed up the team's preseason loss at Houston and now reaction. Just worrying about the things we can control right now. Um, you know, playing harder, playing more physical uh, on the defensive end for sure, trying to continue to get into the paint on the offensive end, put pressure on the rim, and then, you know, get easy shots. Uh, we didn't shoot it well, so. You know, that never helps, um, but you know, it was the first preseason game. Uh, we we're in here working hard today, uh, trying to learn, uh, trying to build on everything, and uh, we'll continue to build throughout the preseason and be ready for the first game. Spurs and Magic will tip tonight at 7 at the AT&T Center. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys are getting ready for the L.A. Rams, and Cooper Rush is working with the first team. That's because Dak Prescott is not ready to return. Head coach Mike McCarthy confirmed that Prescott is still not able to grip the ball firmly enough to throw following surgery on his fractured right thumb following the first game of the regular season. Dak Prescott, well, he'll be in the rehab group today. Um, you know, until he had a good visit with the doctor yesterday. So the next step is to get enough strength um, in the hand to, to throw the football. So uh, he will work exclusively uh, with Britt Brown today. Brown is the Cowboys trainer and in some related Cowboys news, Cole Beasley has decided to retire from the NFL. His agent making the announcement after 11 seasons in the league, seven of those seasons spent with the boys. Texans quarterback Davis Mills ranks 22nd in the NFL in completion percentage, 19th in passing yards, and 29th in quarterback rating. The poor performance by the offense, especially at the start of games, is drawing boos from Texans fans at home, and that's never good. This is horrible, right? I mean, but, you know, that's, uh, that's just part of the game. You know, you go everywhere. Every team, we were in Denver, they were booing their offense, you know, so it's like, it's that's just part of it. You, we can't really let um, that dictate how we feel or whatever. We got to just continue um, to do our job. The Texans travel to Jacksonville for a noon kickoff on Sunday. Baltimore Orioles prospect Jordan Westberg, seen here batting, was named the Brooks Robinson Minor League Player of the Year. The, new, the former New Braunfels High School star is the number five prospect in the Orioles organization, a number 77 prospect in all of minor league baseball per the MLB pipeline. He began the year in AA, then on June 7th was promoted to AAA, and now he's the O's Player of the Year. Yeah, I'm proud of the award. Um, I put in a lot of work this off season to, you know, obviously produce the way I did this year, and um, I'm I'm happy that I won it. Obviously, you know, you said it's essentially at the at the big league level. It's not about me. It's about the team and about winning games and winning championships. I come down to, but right now it's still cool to be able to win this award. He is on the fast path, to the bigs. That's for sure. That's pretty good. Who is it? Uh, Lance. Berkman. Yep, Lance Berkman. Yep. Remember State. the name. Yep. Lance Berkman. All right. Oh, we get to go to SA Live now. Oh, yes. We are going to tell you how you can go nuts in Floresville. Oh. Ah, yes. And tell them how. Uh, free as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Want to do a little bit of quilting? Yes, Stacey Byron, of course, is here. And you are going to show us how to do an easy quilting craft, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So you can see here, I've got my really amazing sugar skull. Now, I know that you think this flower crown is one piece, but it's not. It's actually many little pieces, and it's a lot easier to do than you think. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay, it is pumpkin time, and what's more fun than the pumpkin patch? And that's where Jen is over there at Divine Acres. Oh, look at how pretty that is. So much fun over there. All right, want to do a little bit of shopping? Oh, uh, yes. All right, Karen Saunders owner of Bambino's Boutique joins us. And this is a place where you can, everything you need under one roof, right? Yep, brand new to San Antonio, the painted tree. There's over a hundred local small businesses with everything you need for fall from little ones to getting some stuff for yourself. All right, and great gifts as well. And it's in a very familiar place. A lot of people know very well. And cheers to some Halloween cocktails. We've got Twang in the house to show you a few recipes. 
and we're gonna tell you if you can enter to win ten thousand dollars towards a remodel Ooh. for your home. Really? Yeah, stick around for that chance. All that and more when SA Live continues. With that unmistakable sound and a few gritos thrown in. <gasps> Mariachi music celebrates the triumphs, struggles, and heartbreak of the Mexican people. While some aren't exactly sure of the origins of mariachi music, it is widely believed it developed from early mestizo folk music in the western regions of Mexico and was known as the music of the country people. The ensemble of musicians that we enjoy today took shape in the 19th century in the state of Jalisco, and during the Mexican Revolution, mariachi music was adopted as a symbol of nationalism. Because of deep Hispanic roots, mariachi music has become a a large part of the Hispanic culture in the United States with its very first international mariachi conference in 1979 held right here in San Antonio. Not only in Mexico and the United States, mariachi music is enjoyed at celebrations around the world. All right, right now we've already warmed up to 87, so it is going to be a warm afternoon. I think we'll be up near 90 later today, but expect some increasing clouds. We'll see quite a bit more cloud cover tomorrow. Really doesn't affect temperatures, though, much as we stay right around 90 degrees through the weekend. A little more humidity, though, we think, by the middle part of next week. Thank you, Justin. Mariachi music and Halloween going to be all fired up for SA Live. How about you? Ready? Can you make that sound? No. Nah. <laughs> no. Not on purpose. <laughs> SA Live starts right. No. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Hey, it's Paulina Chavez, and you're watching SA Live. Hello and happy Thursday. Well, that was Paulina. She's an actress from San Antonio landing big roles on screen, and she just joined the cast of a Netflix top 10 oh, trending hi. show. <laughs> Hello. I thought we were scrolling the video. Know. We're, we're going we're gonna to chat with her about it. You'll see that in a bit. Good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorstiza. And I'm caught off guard here. So I'm like, oh, sure. <laughs> we both were. Like, oh, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey. But it is uh, one o'clock. So yes, it seeks up on us every day. The <laughs> SA Live Halloween DIY week continues, y'all. And our first guest today is sharing easy to do DIY Halloween sewing project. Yeah, you are definitely going to impress your friends and family with these. Joining us now is Stacey Hernandez, Pyron quilter and sewing expert from Mesquite Bean Fabrics. I just love it when you call me a sewing expert. So that's the best. <laughs> Thank look, you. I mean, look at what I you've know. done right here. That's <laughs> Pretty, pretty impressive, stuff. right? For anyone who miss it, tell them what this is, because they, they might be thinking this, you know, this, uh, you know, this skull is yeah, all so one piece, but it's not. It's not. This is actually what's called collage quilting, and it's exactly what it sounds like. We take little pieces of fabric, put them all together to make one big scene. So here, I've made the sugar skull with the flower crown, and just like Fiona said, everything on here is an individual piece. It is not so one each big piece. Flower is yes. Flower. Now I know that looks it intimidating. Looks intimidating. Well, well, and really? also a lot of people think of quilting as, you know, your grandmothers and great grandmothers would sit exactly. around and stitch all of the different yes. pieces of material together. Yeah. We got a much easier way, Oh, right? yes, absolutely. You're really going to impress your friends with this. We like okay. the cliff notes. So, all, right. all right. So today we're using something called steam a seam. And what it is, it's a double-sided fusible. And I'm actually going to hand it over to Mike because mm -hmm. he's going to do the first fusing. What you're going to do is you're going to take the one side off. You're going to go to the back of your fabric, press it down. Now, a fusible means you have to fuse it on there. How do you fuse it on there? With heat, exactly. So you're just gonna kind of give that a good ironing there until it gets nice and warm, until the glue fuses to the back. Now once you do that, you're gonna end up with a piece of fabric just like this that's gonna have the paper on the back. So what do you do then? Then you start by taking that fabric off, off of the back, the paper off of the back. Mm -hmm. We're gonna actually skip that one because it will need to cool down okay. a little bit. Okay. Off of this. Take the paper off of the back would and you, actually you can use some of the little question. piles. Would yeah. you cut it out first before you? You can do either way. Usually okay. I do. Yeah, usually I do, but you know, it's already fused. You're not gonna, what's really great about the steam -a seam is that you're not gonna get a ragged edge on there. So it's fused on the back, which means you're gonna get nice clean edges okay. just like this one here. So I've given you all some nice little pieces of fabric here to work with. And basically you're just gonna make your own little collage here. So you just take whatever little pieces you want mm -hmm. and kind of make something fun and cute like we've got with these here. You can 
can do a bunch of different things with this technique as well. I've made some cute little quilts, wall hangings, a little centerpiece for the table. This here is a little embroidery piece that I'm working on. I just used a little bit of the fabric with the fusible and I'm going in to add some cute little stitches. Or say you want to do something special for Halloween. Uh -huh. We've got this really pretty but basic tote bag here that we gussied up with some really fun Halloween fabric. And think of this as like double-sided tape, but the nice thing about it is you said before you iron it down, if I don't like where that was, exactly. I can pick it up and pop exactly. it Exactly. You can okay. adjust it, you can move it, and then when you're finished and you're happy with the placement of everything, you're going to fuse it down again, spray it with a little bit of water or a wet pressing cloth, and hit it again with your iron, and then it's fused down forever. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do forever. it like that. Forever. 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 Like, are you sure? Forever. Yes. Go for it. <laughs> So I want to steam it yeah, a little bit? Yeah, just spray it a little bit of water. Yep. There we go. Okay, All right, just like perfect. That. He's got a lot of confidence. He and does. Then, <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, now, once I do this, if I want to and steam these down, mm -hmm. I can always add to it and put more exactly. on it and keep layering. Exactly, exactly, oh. which is exactly what I did here. You add layers to it, it's going to add a little bit of depth to that as well. And then that way, uh, you, you glue it down in steps, and if you bump it, everything doesn't go Exactly, yes, that's wonderful. Do you oh, have that's to a great sew point. down the edges then? So so I usually do if I'm wearing it or using it for clothes because mm -hmm. it's going to get washed. What about for overachievers? Right for now? overachievers, yes, he would definitely <laughs> stitch that down. Yeah, I like this guy. <laughs> now, if it's doing something like uh, the tablecloth or the wall hanging, it's not going to get washed, so you really don't have to worry about making those stitches down because it's just going to hang there on the wall or sit there on your table. I like the skull type thing right there. So. <laughs> um, you have and you have classes at your place, we do right? yes. So, so we we do everything. have beginner quilting classes. Our wonderful teacher Joy teaches everything from beginning to end, going through fabric, all the way through the quilting and the binding. We do also have collage classes as well, several times a month. Um, so if you want to learn, <coughs> excuse me, if you want to learn this technique, we actually do have a wonderful certified instructor who will walk you through every okay. step of that. All right. Oh, you want your iron? Yeah, that would be she great. Wants, yeah, okay. she wants to fuse you. it. She wants to fuse it. Here, let's you get it. Oh, oh, you want to put it on there? We're going to, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, we don't okay. want to melt the mat. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Hit it with some water. Hit it with some water oh, first. Hit it with some water. Oh, wait, wait. You have that too. Thank you. Fiona, you did it. Oh, yeah, you did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Between the two of us, we did. All right. And if you have like a bunch of old material you want made into a quilt, you all can do that. And you've got the big machine that can we do, do all this stuff. We do. We do offer long arm quilting services. Yes. Okay. All right. For more information on mesquite bean fabrics, just head to salive.com. Click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Okay, this right. is kind of neat. I like this. It is. It is. Well, he is admiring his work. He always does whenever we do sewing or See, any I, type of segments. I can, I can, sang, I can wear like a cravat or something here. Okay. So. Or it's yeah. like a little pocket. Or a bit. Yes, yeah. there we go. So, okay. All right, well, it's a throwback Thursday, so we want you to share your, careful, that's hot. Yes, careful, you. <laughs> share your Halloween photos from years past past, whether it's your kids, your pets, your couples, your, your couples, whole family, be sure uh, to tag us at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and you may see some of those a little later in the show. All right, well, from Halloween DIY projects to Halloween and fall adventures. On today's Texas Trippin', our Jen Tobias Strusky takes us to a family farm celebrating 20 years of pumpkins, Christmas trees, and lots of activities. If you're planning your next family fall adventure, we're taking you today to Divine Acres Farm. Now you can come here, it's just 30 minutes away from downtown San Antonio and there's so much to do. Let's go explore. 20 years ago, we decided to move back to our hometown. We're both from Divine. We decided it was time to move back to our hometown to raise our kids and we found this land. It was 45 acres that we fell in love with and we were trying to figure out what we could do as a, a weekend hobby and we realized that you could grow Christmas trees in Texas so we started <laughs> planting Christmas trees and started with the Christmas tree farm and did that for several years and then added the, the fall season to that. But the fall season is so much fun. Uh, we actually have close to 50 activities now so in the beginning we had just very few but every year we've been growing and adding and it's been a lot of fun to uh, see what families enjoy and the traditions they're making over the years. Some of the more popular things I would say for sure is the hayride. Everybody wants to take a hayride and paint a pumpkin and catch and release fishing is huge. And then something new this year we added is groovy goat races. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, we wanted to do something fun to commemorate our 20th year. 
The goat races are very interactive. And then of course we added Santa's silo that uh, ties more into Christmas, but it's a really great photo op and just fun during all the seasons. Debbie and Ken Caps are celebrating 20 years of running this fun, family-friendly destination, but it's also a full working farm. On the property, you'll find a coffee shop, play areas for the kids, pavilions for shade, and yes, this time of the year, many field trips. And all of our staff, probably 90% of our staff are retired teachers. So we're just very blessed. We have a great staff and uh, the field trips have really been growing and it's one of our favorite things on the farm. Okay, if you're planning your trip to come out for the weekend, uh, it's best to buy your tickets online. It's at a reduced rate online as opposed to the gate. You can still buy them at the gate, but if you go online, it is reduced and it is guaranteed admission if the farm does reach capacity that day. Uh, when you do get to the farm, uh, we have everything you need as far as food, drinks, fun. Uh, we have wonderful, amazing burgers. We have all kinds of drinks from, you know, fountain drinks to um, lemonade to frozen lemonades to farmeritas to wine to beer. We have have caps and corks out here. Uh, they're doing a great job with the wine and beer. Uh, and then once you get in the farm, there's just so many different activities that you can do as well. That includes live music near their caps and corks mobile bar. They also have gemstone mining. And one of the favorites here is the bus full of corn. Families are coming out and they're making memories and, and us and our staff are also making those memories. So it's so neat to see the interactions with the families that are coming and to become part of some of their traditions. Some of the families <laughs> that came 20 years ago are still coming today with their kids and grandkids. And if you're looking for some photo opportunities for fall or your Christmas cards. Um, so we do allow professional photography on the farm. We uh, ask that it's during hours that we are open to the public and photographers can go to our website and scroll down to the very bottom and there's our photography policy. And if you're looking to get some shopping done, there's plenty of unique finds here at their gift shop for all ages. And when you come visit Divine Acres Farm, keep in mind you're supporting a family owned business. Our kids are grown now. A few of them are part of our business now, some of them as a side job, but it's just been really neat to have them grow up in this environment and then still be a part of it. And now we have five grandchildren. And so we'll hope the tradition continues with a third generation. But honestly, Kenny's parents work here, so we are now a four-generation farm. Okay, I've had a wonderful time at Divine Acres Farm, and thank you guys for having me. Thank it's been a great time to check out everything here. Remember, they are open from now until the end of October every weekend. They're also open on Columbus Day, so you can come out here with the family. And cheers to 20 years. Thank you. Cheers, cheers to 20 more. 20 more. <laughs> for more information, head over to SALive.com, click the As Seen on SA Live tab, or scan that QR code on your screen. And we have a deal for you. Use the promo code SALive on their website to purchase tickets. And guess what? You're going to save $2. And they also have an event happening this Saturday, the Black Hat Affair. Now, this is for grown-ups only. You must make a reservation. And you can save $4 for this event using that same SALive promo code. I tell you right now, baby, all we need to have is neon red. Is neon blue. And when I say live continues with Texas music, we tell you about a free festival happening in Floresville. Eat, drink, play, and listen to some great music. And we have one more week of Hispanic Heritage Month, and a San Antonio-based company is making some themed Thirsty Thursday sip for us. That's next on SA Live.